thanks um, for uh, for coming. So um, I'm going to share some experiences with you about uh, um, this project we did uh, with with regional fire departments to see if we could um, uh, help their sense of orientation using uh, augmented reality. So first of all, uh, fire still has a major impact on our society. We do more and more in prevention, but uh, there is about half a million fires per year in the US uh, with all the human and economic costs that, uh, that are related to it. So it makes sense to um, not just work on prevention, but also give firefighters the best tools that we can think of for um, uh, to help them do their work. Um, and one of the most important elements in that is, is, is speed at the moment. Uh, what, uh, when an alarm goes in a, in a fire department, they manage to leave within two minutes, uh, just stop whatever they were doing, uh, get in the truck, uh, go on their way, and then these are European numbers, but I assume it's the same here in the, in the US. Um, fire stations are placed in such a way that within eight minutes maximum, they can reach the, more, the majority of the, of the population, and then when they arrive on site, Obviously, the stress is still there, but they take about up to 13 minutes to search, uh, to, to get out and search, uh, search a, well, let's say a four-room four apartment and, uh, and bring people out of the, out of the building. Um, this is very fast, and I think it's a great achievement, uh, considering, I mean, eight minutes to get anywhere in the town is usually already very fast. Um, but it's always too slow. Uh, unfortunately, once you, when you're in an environment with, uh, with toxic smoke, you lose uh, consciousness within, um, let's say, 13 minutes and um, another four minutes more and, uh, and they might be too late. So what we're working on in this project is to try to, try to make these last, uh, the last step, like of the intervention, uh, make it faster. Uh, because there is a big, big component which slows down the work of firefighters and it's smoke. Uh, smoke is very problematic because you don't see much. It, you literally don't see more than a few centimeters uh, in, in front of you. And it, um, it forces them to work um, with their hands, hands on the wall to navigate uh, with safety lines. They stay in, uh, in groups together. And now and then they stop and use a thermal camera to scan because uh, infrared has a nice advantage that it goes through most smoke particles. So you get a, quite a good view of the environment. So there is already a part of the solution, but it's not hands-free. So we thought we can improve this by using, surprise, surprise, augmented reality. Um, we wanted to project a thermal image in, in their field of view that allows them to move more freely and have a, a permanent good view of the environment. So we made a proof of concept, and it, uh, it looks uh, like this, where you, uh, where, you see, uh, <laughs> where you see nothing, you just see smoke. Uh, and um, and um, the thermal imaging really allows you to see people that you didn't see before. Uh, it allows them, when they use the fire hose, um, to spray exactly at the hottest spot of the fire, because usually, as soon as you open the fire hose, there is just steam, and there is nothing you can see anymore. And with, if you have thermal imaging, you can see actually where you're pointing with, uh, with your fire hose, and you can point very, uh, very, uh, very nicely. And they, they can do that nowadays with a, with, a, with a handheld thermal camera, but if you have a handheld thermal camera, you cannot hold your fire hose, so it's not a very practical tool. And um, yeah, this, this is, uh, we took the thermal image and we projected it on a transparent screen. And obviously, that's not so so nice. Uh, handheld cameras often use black and white images for uh, for the thermal. You cannot see see that on a thermal image. So we worked a lot on on making good visualization algorithms that both show very clear contours of the environment, but also uh, still show the temperature. Uh, for firefighters, temperature is very important. There is a few risk zones where you want to know uh, what the temperature is. Um, and we did all this on, uh, on, with off-the-shelf components. So the proof of concept was based on, uh, on a pair of Epson glasses and, uh, and, and a sensor we could, uh, we could just buy. And then we did lots of tests uh, in realistic conditions. So um, uh, we used fire simulators for people who've never been there. Those are just concrete, uh, raw buildings with, with a lot of smoke and, uh, and gas fire generators where you can do very nice realistic tests and show that actually the performance uh, of the fiber improves using our, uh, using our system. Uh, and then uh, what's, what we found is very important is really talk, talk with the subjects, like really get all the information out, whether they are happy, whether they're not afraid, whether it doesn't block their vision, whether they feel empowered by it, and, and try to get all the details out about how they, uh, how they experience the system. And all that was, uh, was very, uh, very positive. So we 
So we keep going because this was the, um, the proof of concept that we made this uh, convincing uh, video with. Um, as you can see, a GoPro on top, which is not necessary, but it, it's, it's necessary for filming, so we can study later what we're doing, but it's not part of the, of the concept. But this is obviously not usable in, uh, in firefighting. I mean, uh, firefighters use masks, uh, breathing masks, when they go into buildings where they uh, uh, get oxygen, because you don't want to uh, uh, breathe the, the toxic smoke. And um, uh, so now we're working on, uh, on integrating that. We hired a little, a little team, and we're working on integrating the the components and our visualization algorithm into one of these masks. So, um, well, hopefully in three to six months we have a we have a prototype that we can demo in more realistic conditions. And um, and in my next talk, I'll tell you about tell, tell you about uh, the challenges of uh, of making all this hardware robust for uh, for firefighting because that's what we're working on now. Thank you very much.